is the annual recruiting podcast. And if you guys listen to the podcast long enough, you know that uh, I don't keep up with it long enough. So the last couple of years, uh, Blake has, has come on and helped me with the recruiting part of it. Blake from keepingitheel.com. Uh, and, you know, Blake, obviously a huge night here for the Tar Heels as uh, another five-star recruit commits to the Tar Heels for next year. Um, but first, how you doing? Welcome back to the podcast. Doing great. Uh, glad to be here. Always glad to be on the show. Uh, excited for Targo basketball coming back around. Yeah, and, and that's kind of where I wanted to start. Let's. I'm going to start with um, who we'll see first in the Tar Heel uniform. So I did not get to watch uh, Late Night with Roy. Thank you to Dish for not covering the stream there. But uh, you told me that you got to watch it. Just just kind of run through kind of your thoughts of uh, if you want to comment on the on the show itself, but obviously mostly the, the basketball being played and, and who stuck out. We got so many new guys this year. Uh, it's hard to tell what this team's going to look like. Sure, yeah. I think I'm a little more optimistic maybe than some people are. Um, people tend to have the idea that uh, this team's not going to be as good as last or as talented as last year's, and I actually tend to be on the opposite end. Um, you know, all the, all the talk has been around Cole Anthony, obviously, and, and he's going to be fantastic. And NBC Sports just named him a second-team All-American today. Um, so the hype there for him is obviously uh, immense. Um, and I think he's going to be terrific. I think he's going to be a one and done. He's going to earn a, a very high spot in the NBA draft. Uh, I also uh, think uh, very, very excited for uh, Christian Keeling and, and Justin Pierce. I think these guys are going to be fantastic. Um, I think as as senior leaders, they're going to be tremendous for the Tar Heels. And I think both their uh, their skill level and, and and how they've been in terms of durability as players throughout their college careers is going to be a big deal. Uh, you know, add five star center Armando Bacot to that. Uh, I think he's going to be a big time player in Chapel Hill. And I think the progression of Garrison Brooks is going to be huge this year. Um, he's got two years under his belt and uh, he's been a starter for, for basically all of that. And I think uh, this third year, I think is going to be huge um, in his progression, both as a defender and an offensive player. So I think there's plenty of talent. I think the bench is good too. Leaky Black coming off the bench. Uh, Brandon Robinson is going to be a huge player this year. He's going to be a threat from the three point uh, line. A lot of good things in Chapel Hill this year. Yeah, and so I, I agree. The talent is there. You know, Cole Anthony is, is projected one and done. We got five star in, in the in Bacot down low. Uh, we got a mixture of returning guys, like you said, Leaky Black. Um, you know, even Garrison Brooks, the lone starter coming back, but uh, two year starter now. And um, you know, Playtech when he gets healthy. You mentioned B Rob. So the question I kind of have, and, and and it's kind of ridiculous taking you know, drawing conclusions from a, what was it, 20 minute scrimmage or, you know, whatever, but uh, also lots of guys out with injuries, but the chemistry, uh, we talk about this with Duke a lot of times with all their freshmen coming in, but our guys, like I said, so many new guys coming in, how do you see them meshing and, and what does our chemistry look like? Um, you know, I'd like the chemistry at this point. And, you know, obviously that's that's been a question with, with Kentucky teams in the past. It's been a question with Duke teams in the past. How do all these new guys that aren't used to playing with each other come together and play for a season? Um, you know, at least in terms of Roy Williams and these North Carolina teams over the last 15 years, uh, we haven't seen a ton of guys come in, you know, on a one-year, you know, rental sort of basis. There haven't been a ton of one-and-dones. Uh, there haven't been a ton of transfer players. One that comes to mind for me is, um, it is Justin Knox. He was uh, with the Tar Heels some years back, and, and he was very good. And, um, I, you know, I trust Roy to get the chemistry right. I trust Roy to uh, have the right guys in, in the uniform and, um, and the right guys on the court with each other. And I think the chemistry is going to be there. It looks good so far. And, and of course, we, we usually see that a Roy Williams team in March is usually much better than a Roy Williams team in November. So there could be some growing pains. Uh, but uh, that's that's yet to be seen. So so we'll have to see how they come out the first you know five to ten games of the season. But they'll have to start fast this year because, as you know, uh, the ACC schedule starts immediately this year. Yeah, that'll that'll be an interesting. What a year to do it! Of course, when we have you know a ton of new guys and we start a little bit slower than as as opposed to having a veteran team. But um, yeah, like you said, we may go through some bumps early on, and, and we'll talk, of course, about predictions as we get into player predictions. And maybe I'll have to have you back on and next month or something to talk about what we expect from this team a little bit more as we go through the schedule and, and individual guys. But um, we'll get into that later. 
Um, before we move on from late night with Roy, of course, you know, big on on the dances and the skits that the guys do. So I did get a, a question as I posed it out to Twitter if anybody had any questions. I didn't get any recruiting questions, but the one I did from Jared Varner, a listener, says the chances of Mac Brown and Roy having a dance off. I don't I don't know that those are good, but having watched them now, who who wins a dance off between Mac and Roy? Oh boy, I, I tell you what, Mac is is making his case this year. Uh, but after seeing Roy uh, again at, at late night, I, I think I got to go with Roy. He's, I think he's got uh, a few years on Mac recently, at least, where Mac was kind of in the booth and hanging around the sport, but not as not as much the dancing in the locker room. So I think I think Roy may have him, but Mac Mac's making a good case. And and you gotta you gotta credit in some bad knees for Roy. So he's doing that on bad knees. You gotta you gotta give him the edge there. Bad knees and vertigo. So yeah, I, I gotta give it to Roy. <laughs> All right, so let's let's transition here. Big night for the Tar Heels tonight as Caleb Love, a point guard, uh, commits to Carolina for next year. Uh, so we're, you, you already said Cole Anthony projected one and done. Probably don't have him next year. We need a guard to step in. Uh, we got Francis in this year coming off injury. We got Leaky Black that can run it a little bit. Um, but what does Caleb Love here do for the Tar Heels? Oh, Caleb Love's a big deal. Um, so point guard was obviously the area of need. Um, you know, the Tar Heels had already signed, obviously, Dayron Sharp last June. Um, we, you know, we, we saw the Tar Heels basically go like 13 months without a commitment, 13, 14 months. And then Walker Kessler finally committed. Um, so, so the big guys on this, on this unit are, are set. Uh, there's also a chance that uh, there's an overload of big guys because right now, like I said, you've got Garrison Brooks who would you know be a senior next year. We don't know if he's going to go to the NBA after this year or what he's going to do. He could very well be back in Chapel Hill. Um, I'm not convinced yet that Armando Bacot is a one and done. Uh, I could I could see him being in Chapel Hill next year. Uh, potentially a healthy Sterling Manley will be back, and and then you talk about a couple of guys like Daron Sharp and, and Walker Kessler. So the front court at UNC next year could be there. And- and Brandon Far Huffman and the in there as well. And, and Brandon Huffman, which I, I would add that Brandon Huffman is going to have a hard time getting minutes in this lineup. Right. Uh, because this may be the biggest lineup that we've ever seen North Carolina have. And North Carolina's had some big lineups, but th- this lineup's going to run like four guys, 6'10 and taller. Um, so, in terms of Caleb Love, uh, the, the whole thing was that, you know, obviously, you know, last year North Carolina had Kobe White. He was a surprise one and done. Uh, it worked out because Cole Anthony ends up committing. Cole Anthony will almost undoubtedly be a one and done as well. He could be, you know, potentially be the number one pick in the draft. Uh, so we look for him to be gone next year. So the position of point guard became very, very important because you're assuming that, you know, with Cole Anthony after one really good season, he's going to be gone. So uh, this team is going to need a, a, a floor general out there. And uh, they had their name in the hat for two guys, um, obviously still in there for one guy, but they've at least got one of those guys in Caleb Love. Now, Cade Cunningham is still on the board. Uh, all indications are that Cunningham is deciding between Oklahoma State and maybe one or two others, one of those being North Carolina. Uh, there's a lot of insiders that feel like if anybody was going to get him other than Oklahoma State, it would be the Tar Heels. Uh, I, I tend to think that he will go to Oklahoma State, but Roy has definitely sold him on the idea of a two-guard lineup. So I don't think that the Caleb Love commitment necessarily um, knocks North Carolina out of the runnings for, for Cunningham. Um, I think it's still just playing more likely that he goes to Oklahoma State. I, I think that they've recruited him very hard. Mike Boynton has been terrific, um, the head coach of Oklahoma State recruiting him. Uh, his brother is on staff there, as everyone knows. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's possible. And if they do, that is a scary backcourt. But as it is, Caleb Love comes in, and he's this athletic score-first point guard. Um, you know, he's, he's going to be a good runner. He's a good passer. He's a good facilitator. Uh, but, but the hallmark of his game really is his ability to score, and he can score in bunches. Uh, so he's going to be that sort of uh, maybe shoot first point guard, you know, maybe only gets three and a half assists a game, but he can drain, you know, 20 points a game on any given night, you know, kind of a Kobe White esque player uh, with the talent that he's going to have around him already from, you know, either returning players or, you know, Sharp and Walker Kessler, the guys like this in the lineup. I think he's going to have a tremendous time at North Carolina, whether it be for a year or two years or however long that is. And so you mentioned Kobe White there quite a bit. Obviously, the year he had, you know, one and done. Does that, I mean, you know, Cole Anthony doesn't hurt either, but do, getting those guys in, does that, is that why Caleb Love committed to North Carolina? I think it helps seeing guys have that kind of success. I think we've been missing that recently um, when you talk about North Carolina basketball, seeing guys that are 
very dynamic players that go to the NBA after, uh, of course, one year. I mean, very, very helpful because many of these young players are on the fast track to hit the NBA. So uh, is, Caleb, were, is Caleb Love projected out as a one and done here being a five star? Um, I mean, that's a long ways out. Yeah, but. You know, I, I would not count him out as being a one and done. Uh, I would say very much that Roy is is already looking for for that next point guard in the in the following class. Um, I, you know, I'd love to see him stay in the uniform for a couple of years, but um, I would doubt him being very, very, very good and, and having a shot at going to the NBA. Uh, so I, I would say that Roy is very in tune with that. Roy, you know, knows that he's pretty much if he's going to recruit these type of guys, Kobe White's, Cole Anthony's, Caleb Love's every single year, that you've got to be ready to replace them every single year. So he's certainly not. Uh, you, know, you know, missing that. And then I think you'll see him probably throw the Tar Heels name in the hat for, for a number of uh, point guards in 2021. All right. So let, let's move on to some other guys. Obviously, you've mentioned a lot of names in there. Let's start with the guys that have committed already. We got um, Sharp, uh, a big guy, was he 6'10", center, and then Kessler as well, seven foot center, but can step out a little bit more. What more details can you give about those two guys that we'll see next year? Yeah, well, you know, Kessler is an exciting, an exciting guy. Um, you know, he, he's a, he's a good defender. Um, he's he's obviously seven feet tall, so he changes the game from down low. But he's also this versatile uh, sort of uh, you know, all around scorer that we're seeing the sort of you know big man in, in basketball now turn to, where um, you know you know people remember Tyler Zeller. I don't know that Tyler Zeller is a terrific comparison, but Tyler Zeller was a player who had the ability to sort of play all over the court. Um, he could play down low. He could step out a little bit. Kessler is in that same mold, you know, seven foot, 255 pounds. I mean, just a massive body. Um, you know, he can he can shoot shots from all over the court. He can step out and hit the three with consistency. Um, he's a good, you know, rebounder in his area. Um, and, and he can run up and down the court. So he's a guy that, that absolutely fits into that sort of, you know, Roy Williams, North Carolina up-tempo mold. And and they run sharp. People have said, you know, why why does Roy have two centers on this on this team, you know, on this incoming class? And you know, how is there is there a need for 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 two? But it, it sort of reminds me of like Zeller and Henson, or um, you know, something of, of that nature, where there's two guys that that complement each other. They're not really competing for the same spot because Dayron Sharp is going to be a guy that's uh, that's more of a post you know, player where he stays down low and he, and he rebounds tremendously well and he's good with putbacks and he's got great hands and footwork. Um, and so I think they complement each other very well. And I think you'll see many, many times where they're on the court at the same time. All right. So that's, that's who we got, who's committed for sure. Uh, we do got, we got somebody watching us here live and, and left a little comment saying we got a killer 2020 recruiting class, still get one more. I believe we, you know, especially depending who leaves after one year, whether it's just Cole Anthony, if, if Baycott has a breakout year goes, like you said, Brooks could go early. Um, and if you look at any recruiting website for the Tar Heels, there are a lot of targets still out there and people with interest in the Tar Heels. Uh, let's, let's limit it so we don't go all night here talking about it. But who are kind of, you, you mentioned some names already and, and Cunningham who, you know, it's probably pretty likely to go to Oklahoma State because his brother's on on staff there. Um, but obviously, you can't count out Roy hasn't given up on him. He's still recruiting him. But, you know, we got Cunningham. Who else is there that, you know, we're pretty warm on and who's a likely, at least we get down into his top five, top three, um, between who he's picking up? Sure. Yeah. Well, Greg Brown's still a player that uh, Roy has uh, hopes that will come to North Carolina. He's a guy from Texas that. Um, I, I think at this point, it's more likely that he ends up at the University of Texas. He's a, you know, he's 10 or so miles from the campus in Austin. Um, so uh, obviously he's the, the big local get that you want to see, you know, the, the University of Texas kid, Shaka Smart, you know, wants to keep that guy home. Um, so, so Roy is still recruiting him, but he would be a tremendous player. But I also have to question, you know, where does he fit in with the big guys that are already on the, on the roster and the guys that are coming in? And I would say the same thing for, for Isaiah Todd. He's a guy that uh, many see going to Kentucky, but there are others still who think that he may end up in North Carolina. Um, he's a big guy. You know, he's going on seven feet tall. And, and it's another player, again, that uh, I question what kind of minutes does he want and what kind of spotlight does he want? Um, and if he goes to North Carolina, will he get those? Uh, so Roy is still recruiting him, and, and they're still recruiting analysts who think that he may very well end up in North Carolina. 
Uh, I'm not one of them. I, I think he'll he'll go somewhere else, but he would be a tremendous kid as well. And then there's also a small forward in Zaire Williams, uh, you know, from the West Coast that um, I think it's going to be hard to get him off the West Coast. I think he could end up very well going to uh, to Stanford with uh, Jared Haas, the old Roy Williams uh, protege. Um, Duke's also recruiting him, but he would be a tremendous wing to add to this North Carolina class. And if they were able to add him, they would have m maybe their best class in, in, in a decade. Uh, all right. So I don't think I heard you hear or mention Zaire Williams. Did I, or did I miss that one? Yeah. Zaire, yeah. From the West coast. Yeah. Zaire is, is the one that did right now. Jared Haas has been uh, tremendous recruiting him and he's really been there from the start. And, and I think that he could very well nab Williams, uh, but but Roy is still recruiting him and, and trying very hard. But Coach K has also jumped in there over the last few months and, and really uh, made things interesting. All right, so that that lists all of them. I want I want to put you on the spot here a little bit. Uh, counting up through our roster, I believe we have four guys we lose next year for sure. Right? We got. Uh, the two Gradford transfers, and then we have uh, B. Rob and Shea Rush. I think is still on scholarship, right? So that's four scholarships that we lose. Uh, we got three signed. Uh, again, Cole Anthony, if he goes, that leaves us two more scholarships. Who who do you kind of foresee, or who would you predict we get if we can get two guys here? Um. Gosh, it's been a crazy year. I, I'll be the first to tell you, I didn't think Walker Kessler would, would commit to North Carolina. I didn't think he would. Um, so Roy has really come back this year and hit the recruiting trail hard and, and really gotten back to the days of old. Uh, well, it speaks to, it speaks a little bit. You know, this is going back years too, but we don't have that scandal hanging over our head anymore. And, and you know, people nagged on Roy so bad. And I know we probably every year we've talked about this, but uh, you know, with that lifted, just seeing what Roy can do. Yeah, in some years between that that being lifted and and now, and it's it's like you know, there's no cloud hanging now, and he's getting guys, and he's getting them right and left. And and I think it's it's also very important, as you mentioned, the the Kobe White you know thing was big. How how you know him him coming in and having this green light that Roy gave him, and him shooting a million shots and having a ton of success, and then and then getting Cole Anthony on the heels of a of a dynamic player like White. Um, these things matter to recruits. You know, they want to see these type of guys come in and, and have a green light and just have tons and tons of rope and, and, and just play with reckless abandon. That, that matters. So Roy handled the Kobe White situation perfectly. Um, and, and, you know, and Kobe just, he earned it. He played, he played well. Uh, but if I, if I had to guess a guy right now out of those ones that I mentioned, I'll still take Zaire Williams uh, by a hair. Um, I the, the farther his recruitment goes, I tend to think he's more likely to stay on the West Coast. Uh, but I could see as long as Roy's been involved and as much as Williams seems to like North Carolina, I could still see him coming to, to Chapel Hill. Uh, but I, I still wouldn't, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I still wouldn't count out Kate Cunningham. I know that people are thinking that Cunningham is off the board now uh, with Caleb Love uh, now committed, but like I said, Roy has sold him on this two guard lineup and we've seen this in the past and we, we see it with teams now. Uh, and Cunningham and Love would be a tremendous duo in the backcourt. Yeah, that would that's I mean that's just crazy to think about right there. That would I mean if you can't get excited about that, then I don't know what's what's wrong with you. So all right, we're gonna we're gonna keep moving out one more year here. Uh, we don't get to get in detailed, but the class of twenty twenty one uh throw out some names of who, who we need to just kind of be aware of, who are we, you know, kind of higher up. Obviously, you know, we're going to have some big guys, hopefully some around as, as many big guys we're going to have next year that we still have some stick around past year, but um, just, just some names that we need to be aware of guys and, and how warm or cold um, we are with them. So, uh, you know, as it stands there, you know, there's not a ton of offers out there uh, for the 2021 class as of now, but, uh, but Roy has offered a couple of guys, uh, one of them being Paolo Banchero. Um, tremendous. Which he needs, he needs to be offered just for his name alone. I, I got to say that, just the greatest name anyway. But sorry, keep going. Yeah, you know, well, big time player in 2021. He's a, you know, he's a big guy, very talented guy. Patrick Baldwin is another one. Uh, Roy has offers out to both of those guys. And at this point, there's absolutely no telling what direction um, 
you know, those guys are going and it could easily be, you know, a year before we find out or more. Um, but, uh, I think you'll see the same type of, of aggressive nature in Roy and his coaching staff this coming season as you have this year. And it's, it's obviously paid off. One of the things people kept mentioning this year is that, you know, man, Roy's really getting out there and offering these, these five-star players, you know, he had offers out to shoot, uh, 15 of these five-star players and, and, you know, he's, he's now signed three of them. So, uh, you know, he's got three in the top 21. And, uh, you know, that's, that's huge. And I think, you know, in college basketball now with the parity that you're seeing on the recruiting trail, um, you know, where you're seeing teams that aren't accustomed to having these big time, you know, five-star recruits, uh, you know, for example, you know, when you see a guy like James Wiseman pick Memphis, uh, when you see a guy in the class of 2020, like Evan Mobley pick USC, and he's the number one player in the class, you know, if Cade Cunningham does indeed go to Oklahoma state. Uh, you know, when you're seeing these players pick these other, you know, schools, um, it, it, it means that the big time guys, you know, still have to work really hard. You know, they're not just getting guys easily like they used to. And, and you've got to cast a very wide net for that to happen. So uh, I think Roy will do that. And, and I think we'll see similar success next year, uh, provided that the, the class that he has come in this year and next year uh, perform and, and, you know, move on to the next level like I think they will. All right, so that we're not we're not going to go any farther than that. Uh, we we only do this once a year. That's I think projecting out far enough. Uh, keep people coming back for next year's recruiting podcast. But uh, obviously, a lot more coming up as we ramp up for this year. Uh, the next podcast I do is going to be the predictions podcast, uh, where everybody sends in their predictions. We'll run through what everybody's got, so we have it on record for the end of the season. So uh, before I let you go, Blake, I'm going to throw you on the record one more or on the spot one more time here. Uh, I know you haven't put any thought into it. You probably haven't looked at the schedule as in that in depth, but kind of what's your prediction for this, this year's team uh, for the Tar Heels? Oh yeah, I mean, that is on the spot. Um, you know, I like the, I like the non-conference schedule. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see the ACC schedule play out for this first season um, when it, when it starts off with Notre Dame right at the beginning of the season. And Virginia um, in December as well. Yeah, and, and I think there's going to be some, some bumps and some bruises and some scrapes. And I think there will be for all the ACC teams. I don't think you're going to see anybody go unscathed. Um, it's a tough, tough conference, and it's, and it's tough um, starting something new, uh, let alone um, you know, increasing this very, very tough schedule with this very, very top-heavy conference. Sure, there's some, some you know, cellar-dweller teams that are easy to run all over, but you know, the top half of the ACC I would put above – any conference in America almost consistently every year, especially when you look at those top four or five teams. Um, so, you know, I think Roy will do what he's pretty much done most of his career. I think you'll, you'll be able to count him to win 75% of his games, even with this sort of uh, makeshift, uh, you know, Humpty Dumpty roster that he's got with these graduate transfers and these young guys and, you know, some holdovers. Um, I, you know, I think they'll, they'll win a lot of games. They're going to win 20 plus games. I think that they, you know, could win 25 games and compete for a number one seed. How far do we go in the tournament? Farther than last year. <laughs> I, th I, I really, I, I think this team is better and, and people, people think I'm crazy. I think this team will be better than last year's team. I know you're losing, um, you know, a, a couple of NBA lottery picks in, in Kobe White and, and Cameron Johnson. Uh, I, you know, I know Cameron Johnson's a great shooter and he opened up the, the UNC offense a lot last year and, and that was very helpful, but I truly think that this team has, uh, the senior leadership, even though that some of that leadership is, is literally brand new to the, to the program. Uh, but, but Pierce and Keeling are going to be huge. And I think people are discounting that. And they're also not just great leaders. They're great on the court. Uh, Keeling is a natural born, uh, just a scorer out there. And, and I would not be shocked to see him lead the team in points or, or certainly battle with Cole Anthony for that title. And, and I think that this is a team that could, could easily reach a Final Four if they gel at the right time, um, if, they're, if they're playing ball um, well at the end of the season, and I think they could be. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll let you off with that. Um, guys, thank Blake so much for coming on. His Twitter there is, is his name there, at BlakeKCMO. Uh, make sure you go check out keepingitheal.com for everything that he's uh, throwing up there, writing. I know he spends a lot of time uh, getting articles up there, and, and it keeps you plenty busy, Blake. So appreciate your time here on the show. 
Um, like I said, hopefully get you back on. I know I'm, I'm bad about getting guests on here, so hopefully we'll get you back here maybe uh, before the season starts yet for a player's prediction on, on this year um, and as we go throughout the season. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got. Until next time, guys, go Heels.